The worst has happened to Sussex. Megan is writhing with self-inflicted hoaxes. Hello, friends. Welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. When it comes to Meghan and Harry's alleged son, Archie Fischel, there is something very strange. Actually, there's a lot of strange stuff. They claimed that his first word was crocodile, and then they tried to say that it was waffle maker. And then they said that it was Grandma Diana. Well, it looks like that disingenuous, treacherous piece of gutter trash has finally done herself in. And Meghan only has herself to blame. And of course, Harry as well. At this point, both of them are a laughingstock all around the world. I mean, people are feeling schadenfreude in every corner of the planet, from north to south, from east to west. And I'm guessing we can all feel the waves of relief coming from the UK as well. We won't have to see that ugly Cheshire Cat grin wearing a potato sack with a sanitary napkin put on her head for a hat appearing at the Abbey for the King's coronation. We won't have to see her ratty extensions blowing in the wind. We won't have to see that smug smirk on her face. And also, there will be no recording devices hidden around that potato sack and head covering too. All of that will be gone from the telephoto lens. So Harry will return as the lone prodigal son whose presence will be tolerated by probably only the king. It will be a little bit like the funeral for Prince Philip where Harry was sauntering along behind the coffin with no trace of his former military training. It looked like Harry was really missing Meghan's claw in his back. The king does have every right to have his traitorous son there at his coronation, and goodness knows if Harry doesn't show up, he doesn't have any crawl space to return to after that horrible, nasty witch of a wife finally dumps him. And who knows, Harry might still back out at the last minute. Anything is possible. I think most of us predicted that Meghan Markle was never going to show up. Although issuing an invitation for both to attend, the palace did make it clear that Meghan was a black rain cloud over the coronation and that would not be tolerated and that she would be doing everybody a favor and herself too by just staying away. Now I'm sure some dishes are flying around the place at Montecito. I'm guessing when the news was passed to her along with that invitation, she was not happy. So, what is she going to do on the actual day? Is she going to continue to lay low, or is she going to try to create a distraction of her very own? I would guess she's going to lay low. I don't think she's going to come out with anything, but I don't know. Nobody is interested in her. She has to be realizing that by now. Nobody cares about what she or her invisible children are doing on Coronation Day, or really any other day for that matter. It looks like the high and mighty have truly fallen with a loud thump that was heard all around the world. This is a really delicious example of schadenfreude. One British expert weighed in, saying creating her own distraction is a non-issue. There is an eight-hour time change between London and the witch's lair in California, so by the time she wakes up and starts thinking, the coronation will have been long over. If she actually gets up and tries to do anything, keyword tries, at the same time as the coronation, everyone will know that she deliberately tried to upstage it. Even the sugars might start getting a brain and see what we have been saying from the off, that she is a pathetic creature who can't do anything right. And then a spectator weighed in, saying, I honestly would have thought that just for this occasion, they, Megan and Harry, could have taken a step back, shut up, and just simply attended what must be not only a major event for his father, the royal family as a whole, and the UK in general, and just got on a plane with the kids and attended. Have a private birthday party for Archie after the coronation. It's his fourth birthday, for goodness sake. Not exactly a huge milestone, is it? But I guess when everything centers around your wants and needs, no one else really comes into the equation. Sad. In my opinion, it also gives them yet another out when it comes to actually having to produce two kids. I really don't believe there are any, and I suspect they're just using child actors or kids of their friends when they try to sell their fantasies to the public. I wouldn't be a bit shocked to hear about the kidnapping of these made-up kids, which corresponds with the coronation. Can't you just hear Megan now? Huh, my children have been stolen thanks to all the media attention about where we would be on the coronation date. This is all the fault of the royal family.
Now, Megan is getting a lot more attention by causing this whole stir and whining about it than the attention that she wouldn't have gotten at the coronation. And since the ginger dimwit is going to show up, they can still grift the whole royal connection. I'm also guessing Megan really didn't want to be around all the royal family members because they would snub her to the fullest extent and the people would probably have booed her, which would be so unpleasant for the both of them. Megan is a pariah and she buys herself awards to make herself feel good about herself. The two of them are just pathetic. I do hope that Harry gets shunned and I hope he gets booed for everything that he has done. An insider stated, This was my first thought when I read the announcement. In the real world, all of us wouldn't bear the shame of attending because of all the bad she's pulled and the fact that her plans have backfired so spectacularly. But I wouldn't be at all shocked if it comes out she flies in the night before demanding things be rearranged for her. After all, how important or detailed of an event can it be if she isn't there? But declining an invitation and then showing up means nothing to her. There are still a few weeks and there will be continued puff pieces for her to gauge reactions. Either way, as so many have said previously, there will undoubtedly be a Megan story in that week. She will never pull focus away from the event, but whenever has that stopped her? It's not like she will have anything else to do on May 6th and will be working OT to soothe herself. A kid's birthday party, even her own or that of a prince, means nothing to her because it's not about her. Though I'm sure there will be multiple stories about it, ranging from how fabulously casual and down-to-earth it was to how heartbroken Prince Archie was that his entire family ignored him. I had predicted Harry would go by himself, but having thought about it after writing the above paragraph, it's pretty disgusting that he chose to attend an event honoring a man he seemingly hates and misses his son's birthday, especially seeing as he missed it last year for a polo match. Mark my words, she's a coward. She's never had a direct conversation with the royals about her grievances. She gets as far away as she can and plays the victim. She complains only when she's the only one there to control the narrative. She never complains to anybody who might hold her accountable. Her complaints are also, for the most part, passive-aggressive, and she leads people to a conclusion rather than say it outright. She's the furthest thing from a strong, independent, empowered female. She's a coward, and the British royal family has her number. So they invited her knowing she'd be too chicken to go. What do you think of Meghan Markle's cowardice? Let us know your thoughts below in the comments section. We hope you have found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave us a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back to see you in the next videos. Bye-bye now.